Hey, so, hey guys, this is Justin with The Morning Chalk Up. I've got two of my other most favorite people in the CrossFit world, Tommy Marquez and Nikki Brazier here. We're gonna be delivering kind of a remote first look at the Reebok Nano X, which just unveiled for the first time worldwide today, this morning. And on as a special guest with us to answer some questions after we get our first look at the Nano X is Tal Short, who's the senior product manager for the Nano at Reebok. So with that introduction, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you two who have been sent an exclusive first pair of the Nano X to actually open this up, check it out for the first time. And then we're going to start with a little interview after that. So why don't you guys go on ahead and uh, I'll let you take it over from here. All right. Cool. All right. Well, right away, I noticed that the box styling is different than in years past. Um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first uh, bo like Nano, at least that I've seen, uh, it came in outside of that red, what was the conic style box. So it's like immediately it seems more of like a classic styling to the box and more like red, white, and blue, um, very like classic, I guess, kind of rebox down into the box just from the get go. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say more like old school logo, less Delta. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. All right. Oh, look, we have like opposite -y. sorry, you can hear everything. Beauty of microphones, we have like opposite oh, colors. Yeah. Ooh. So, <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, um, so the nine was a departure from like the Delta to the classic Reebok logo style, but it still felt like maybe I just kind of initial instinct off of this. This feels like another step towards in that same direction as compared to the nine, both from like the styling, the coloring, even the patterning of the, like, the classic black and white. Yeah. And they almost feel more like classics the way they get more narrow, like toward the toe box a little bit. And I kind of like it, kind of like a, a retro or Euro vibe, more so than the, the like sportiness that we've seen in some of the earlier Nano editions. Um, but I mean, either way, I'm excited. I, I'm into this. I feel like the, uh, the slightly higher profile shoe is starting to become more, uh, I don't want to say mainstream, but you're starting to see that make a comeback before. Um, yeah, like it brings me back. I, I was a... Uh, original Sean Kemp kamikaze shoe guy. That was, that is my favorite pair of shoes of all time. Um, I got it for my, I believe I got it for my 10th birthday. So this kind of harkens a little bit more back to that classic, like sl slightly towards like the mid, mid top, not a low top, not a high top kind of mid top shoe feeling uh, with like the classic Reebok branding on the side. It's got my favorite sort of uh, aspect along the heel, which is that really soft, almost like, it's a little thicker than some of the other, like remember I had the graces that almost felt like a sock on the inside, but I just love when it's a, it's a nice, comfortable and really like malleable part to the heel around the ankle. Maybe that's a good segue to sort of get to tell about what some of the features are about the shoe and, and why you designed it the way that you did. Yeah, so um, you guys pretty much nailed a lot of the, the key details. I, I think aesthetically was where we really wanted to focus. So this has the same exact bottom as the Nano 9, which is a good thing, right? Because people love the Nano 9. We know that. Um, we knew that when we were building this shoe, and, and I'm sure we'll talk about that later. But kind of the, the updates, we didn't want to take it too far from the Nano 9. We really just wanted to amplify what people loved about the 9. And a lot of it was the look of it. So like you said, Tommy, the, the, we actually incorporated the, the vector into it. Um, just so you know, kind of behind the scenes story, the Nano 9, that was a really late change. It actually went all the way through to about six months before launch, we actually switched the branding. So it did have the Delta on it and then we switched it. So you could see like it was a, that's not a good time to switch something. Um, so, um, on, especially when it comes to footwear, like we, I remember we were on conference calls like on, uh, you know, like uh, Christmas Eve trying to get this done. So this with the 10, with the X, we were able to, you know, incorporate it into the design and really make it look more like a sneaker. And that, that was the big thing for us was like, all right, we don't need it to look like a piece of equipment. You can imagine like the Nano 5, like it looked like a hardcore CrossFit shoe. And we, we don't, you know, we just need this to be a really good looking training shoe. And that's hmm. really focused. One, um, one question that I have, and I, I, we get this, this, this was really an eye-opening experience for me once I got into the industry was 
how far out do you actually start the planning for like the next iteration of nanos i know we're seeing this for the first time and you're seeing everybody else see this for the first time but you've probably been looking at this for a long time when does that process start and and how do how do you kind of what are the stages that you go through in a big mega launch like this yeah no, that's a great question so kind of the behind the scenes stories are with with any sort of footwear it's about 18 months from start to finish so you imagine how far out that we're building stuff right now so honestly by the time like today hits with the nano x like reveal it's pretty cool to like re-experience it because this shoe i mean, we i probably stopped wearing it eight months ago and i'm on to the <laughs> trying to you know find out because we're just trying to evolve so it's one of those things it's a long process right so we we take you know we do some early designs we do design reviews and then we go over to asia usually about a couple it'll take two trips to vietnam to really nail down this shoe we'll do it early mm -hmm. on and then kind of towards the end um, and that is just all the little details in the shoe. Like it's so much easier to go over there and just work through it with the factory. Um, so that's, that's a fun, exciting trip. You know, it's like design development myself. So it's a small tight team um, that goes over there and just knocks it out. So it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it is a long, long process. Mm -hmm. And, and so kind of touching on the styling of the shoe, I, I, like you mentioned that you kept the same, uh, like the ba same sole and like that, the kind of like heel cup that was very popular from the nine I personally love, but stylistically from the top and the look and feel and colors and stuff like that, what are some of the places that you guys kind of draw inspiration and kind of, uh, at least as far as like designing a shoe goes from, because for like, this is the 10th edition, you know, the nano accents legacy kind of comes into mind when you think about the 10th iteration of anything. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're super excited about the 10. There's not a lot of franchises that make it to 10. So like, that's why we really want to celebrate calling the Nano X because we just wanted to make it feel a little more special. But really, when we, you know, when we were designing shoes, we looked what's going on outside of, you know, the training world as well, and we, we just kind of we we have an idea of what's going on in the fashion world. We know, you know, how how far we can evolve the shoe. Um, you know, crossfitters are a little bit slower to you know follow the the latest trends. So we we've got to definitely, you know, our designers want to take it really far, and we usually have to you know bring it back. But the one thing that you called out earlier, Tommy, you saw that it was a little bit higher, and that's that is a trend that we saw. Um, the cool thing is, from a if you wore the nine, it's gonna fit just like the nine. Probably, I'd say it's even more comfortable than the nine. And some people might be afraid of that little bit higher height. You don't even notice it because you see how it kind of kicks out in the back there. But you don't really feel it. It's more of just an Achilles like protection. But honestly, mm. at the end of the day, if I think it's probably our best fitting nano by far. And I, I think once you guys try it on, you'll, you'll feel the same way. In addition to, you know, being sort of like a style overhaul, what are the technical uh, evolutions that you guys have put into this shoe based on the things that you heard people like, people didn't like from previous editions? Yeah, so really it was a uh, big focus was the comfort. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Nikki, you were feeling the, the padding. We definitely added more yeah. around the collar. So the Nano 8 and 9 kind of had the, that booty construction that, that was almost like that, you know, that sock-like um, construction. So we wanted to actually get rid of that and, and update it. So we put this really like expensive high density foam in the tongue. So if you can kind of like feel the tongue, it's got a little bit of response to the foam. It's a little more expensive to do, but we just wanted it to feel like the first time you put on this shoe, it's going to feel absolutely amazing. And that's, that was the big thing for us. Um, secondly, you can see like the um, kind of towards the front, the vamp of the shoe, you'll see we have an updated flex weave. So you'll see that material on top. You can actually take your hands and stretch it. So you can actually see that it, it stretches. Um, so it's actually a two way stretch because you know, you don't want to do like, you know, you know, some, some companies try like a knit upper. That's not great for, you know, any sort of training because if you need some stability up there. Um, so if it's too loose, you kind of feel like you're, you're swimming in your shoes. So the way we did it was it only stretches two way to keep it really locked in and, and supportive, but super comfortable as well. And one, one question, sorry, Tommy, one question I have um, is, is kind of around the feedback. You talked a little about some of the feedback that you got in the nine edition and some of the changes you just introduced, but how, like, what are the sources of feedback? How do you go about sourcing that feedback from the CrossFit community? And then the second part of that question is, how does the CrossFit Games itself as like the ultimate test of fitness and where this shoe was designed to compete in, how does that play into um, how you develop uh, additional uh, iterations of, of the shoe? Yeah, 
So yeah, the sources, I mean, I, I think from a design standpoint, we pay attention to any sort of blogs, any sort of posts. So if people leave reviews, we actually have people that like search all the reviews and, and compile them all to a list. And we see if there's any running themes like that people either like or dislike. Unfortunately for the Nano 9, there wasn't a lot of dislikes. So it wasn't as easy as what to identify to update, which is a good problem to have. Um, so there's lots of, you know, we do wear testing throughout the community. So there's a lot of, you know, CrossFitters in this shoe, wearing it, doing wads way early on in the process. And I think the biggest thing that we do that maybe some of our competitors don't is we actually get this in front of consumers very early in the process. So mm. we go and do like focus groups, um, usually globally. We'll go to different cities. We'll, you know, we, they have to sign their life away. They can't tell what they're doing. But like, bottom line is they, they get to try out the shoe and what's cool about it the nano is we actually have them work out in the shoes. So we make sure they're sample size. So not only is it, oh, I like the look of the shoe, they actually get to put it on and wear it. So we have a great consumer insights team that, you know, that we work directly with. And I, I get to be a part of those too. So like we'll travel around and just hearing like direct feedback, especially early on, you're able to actually action it. So, you know, the earlier you get the data, the more, you know, updates you can make um, based on what the community is saying. So that's a super important thing to us. Um, your question on the CrossFit games. Yeah. Like, that's, that's really the, I would say the, um, you know, we got to make sure the shoe is going to work for that. We know that's the pinnacle. Um, I can only imagine, I, I, there's a funny story about, I believe it was 2016 or whenever Dave introduced the pegboard and it was a really hot day in Cali. It was one of the, the last times out in Cali. It was really hot and it was glass. And I'm like, I remember the, I looking around, I was in the stadium. I looked around like we didn't test the shoe for glass in heat. Like we were super concerned. So we're always trying to like think like what could Dave throw in there that we're not ready for. Um, so we feel confident the shoe's built because, you know, you know, Dave, he's not going to give out any secrets. Like he doesn't tell us anything. So we just, hey, here's your shoe that you get. Good luck. Um, but we're, we're very confident that it's going to uphold anything with the CrossFit game. At least it's an even playing field. Like nobody knows, <laughs> even if it's something totally brand new, like everyone's shoes will or won't work at the same time. Very true. Yeah. yeah. And as far, another, another kind of styling question I, I have is, is the colorway specifically. Um, one, I, I like the orange here because to me it harkens back to the original Reebok pumps, that orange basketball that was on the tongue. But as far as the Nano goes, each iteration seems to kind of have that initial colorway launch tends to kind of have like an iconic place in it. I remember the first Nano, the original Nanos, the, the red and the, the yellow were the two primary colors. Mm -hmm. I, go about picking those colors and does it vary like now that it's a little bit more global does, does that change from market to market yeah so we we do take feedback so choosing launch colors like the two you guys have are not the only launch colors mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can i don't think many people would be surprised by that but these are our key marketing colors so when it comes to you know visuals these shoes look really good in any sort of marketing so that all goes you know into into account. We know what sells. I mean, we have tons of history, so we make sure we always cover those, but we do challenge ourselves to, you know, step out because we follow the trends. We have a, an amazing color team that, you know, that keeps us in line. Like, Hey, here's what's trending. Here's what's going to be working. Um, you know, that shoe has a fade. Uh, a lot of CrossFit shoes back in the day had a fade. Not every Nano X will have a fade, but we just, there was something really cool and iconic about it. We didn't want it to look too classic. So we did want to put some sporty like performance in there as well. Um, so that was part of the, the thought process, but there's a lot of people involved. Um, we know you can't satisfy everyone, like every launch color, there's people that love it, hate it. Um, you yeah. can't satisfy everyone, but I think by the end, uh, you see all the launch colors. I think everyone's going to be at least satisfied with one of them. Tal, you've worked on so many iterations of nanos and, you know, great experiences and you've had some of them that you've obviously used to improve future models. I mean, is there a favorite memory? Is this sort of like up in the ranks of the shoes that you've been able to help develop? I would say, that, yeah, the Nano X was probably, I wouldn't say the easiest, but definitely the smoothest. And mm -hmm. I think the nine was a complete disaster from start to finish. And I mean that in a wonderful way because it's one of our best selling nanos, maybe the best selling nano of all time. So it was well worth the work. But like I said, we had late changes. There was a lot mm -hmm. of things going on with that shoe. So um, that's one that I'll always remember. Um, but you know, we, we did a survey, which is the most satisfying thing for us. We did a survey after we sold about, I think it was like a certain amount of pairs on like Reebok.com. So Reebok will send out a survey and say, are you satisfied with what you bought? And the nine came back as like the highest rated shoe ever for Reebok. Wow. Not even wow. just, yeah, not even just like Nano. 
Um, and it was by like 15 points on a scale of like one to a hundred. So it was a decent amount. So we knew, you know, it, it actually added some pressure with the X, but we're pretty confident with um, what we put out there that it's actually going to be better than nine. So um, we're excited to get it out there. It's awesome. It's, uh, Congrats. I, I'm curious in terms of feel, cause you've had a, obviously a chance to wear them and, and test them out and kind of put them through the ringer. To me, there's always like maybe a characteristic or something that kind of defines a shoe, whether it's per uh, performance or aesthetics and things like that. When I think about past iterations of the nanos, like there's always like a description. Is there something that really stands out to you as far as like what characterizes this shoe once you put it on and actually get to run it through? Yeah, I've actually probably worn the X more than any other nano I've ever worn. And I think the one thing that I always, um, or one, one thing to, really comes to mind is um, you almost forget you have it on, which is an amazing feeling. Like you almost forget that it's even a, a training shoe, but also a nano, you know, cause nano has a distinctive feel to it, but there's just something about, and I think you guys will notice when you put it on, it's just like, just fits really, really nice. I, I definitely think it's our best fitting nano um, just from as soon as you put it on. And then when you start working out, it's just like you almost forget about it, which is actually a great thing for footwear. Cause our biggest thing is like, Hey, we just don't want to be in the way. Like let the athletes do their, do their thing. And, Let's stay out of the way. That's so, it must be hard to find sort of this universal fit. I mean, feet come in all different shapes and sizes. And I know the Nano in, in the past has been known for having a slightly wider, roomier toe box. So how do you even develop a, a sizing that works or makes, you know, the majority of feet feel? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. So you'll notice in the Nano, we have that very oblique shape in the front. And, and that's just really keen to really early on in the, in the you know, when we started researching just CrossFit shoes in general is that we needed a, you know, a wider toe box for, to let your feet kind of splay out um, and, and really for, you know, for that ground contact and really so you can feel, you know, really stable underneath your foot. So that was crucial. As the years have gone by, we've kind of inched it in, um, not to where it hurts performance, but for a visual especially on the women's side. We feel mm -hmm. like women, especially, you know, you don't want to tell, you don't want someone to say, Hey, my foot looks fat. Like we get it. I'm, I get it. That's not something we want to hear from. Good. <laughs> we want to help with that visual. So I think you'll notice when you put on the X, it looks a little bit different than some of the other nanos. I, um, so I was in, I was in Boston. I was at Reebok headquarters, Reebok CrossFit one doing a workout with you uh, noon class. This was, I don't know, a couple months ago. Uh, pre pre oh, fantastic. That's what my. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. This is what this happens. Is our Zoom life is all we know now, so it's fine. Shepherd and uh, somebody knocks on the door. It's kind of like mayhem, but, uh, you know, we're just going to roll with it. So I was doing workout with you, and uh, I noticed this pair of shoes on your feet. And uh, I'm, I, I'm not expecting you to talk about them, but the question is, that came up uh, uh, when when I saw them later on was, uh, you know, oh, are those the tens? And they're like, no, 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 these are something else, and that, that that's cool. Um, but the question I have is, is um, is that a part of your design process that you take and get or make prototypes of these next editions and kind of test them out in real environment, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, you know, yourself, is that a part of your own creative process that you utilize? Yeah, no, I was blessed to be a size nine, which is the sample size. So um, <laughs> what's really cool is we have, um, you know, we have a nano squad that I work with and, and in our nano squad, there's like five guys and three of us are sample size and they're, mm. we've all been doing CrossFit for over 10 years. So it's like, we can put it on and know right away or, or test it out. Um, we did one the other day. We wanted to test one of our shoes for 100 rope climbs. And so we just went down. We asked Austin, our, our box owner, back when we were working out in a box. Um, so we, we jumped up and did 100 rope climbs in it. We traded the shoe out. Like we took the shoe off, did rope climb, traded. Like So it, it's definitely, I think, we just because we've been around the Nano so long, we know the feel. Um, so it's, we're really lucky to have a couple of us that you know, can test it personally. Because we definitely pay attention to what the wear testers say, but if it's a you know in between one, if we're we're going back and forth, we're always going to trust our gut just based on some of the history we have. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Nikki, Tommy, got any other questions for Tal? I was I was kind of thinking about uh, you mentioned that the the last minute changes uh, that happen with the nine. Um, is, is that, is that frequent or, and I was, and I was kind of curious if like at what point in the process do you feel like, all right, you can kind of 
respectfully put that project to bed and be like, it's good. Cause I think maybe part of the creative process is you're always trying to refine and tinker a little bit, um, even till the 11th hour. Yeah, no, we're, we're never happy and we're never, <laughs> like we're, we are, we definitely do fight off complacency. There's no, we're, we got to move forward. Like we can't, mm -hmm. it's no time to just stand on the podium and spray champagne everywhere. Like we, I feel like it's never ending, which is a, it's a great cycle to have, but you know, it's just like, you know, an elite athlete, they hit a PR, they're not just going to stop, right? Like, right. we knew the nine was a good shoe. It's like, you know, we can't just, all right, we'll just keep launching nines out there. Like, we, we got to evolve <laughs> with the sport. And that's really what we've been doing. So. so that means that you're already long way into a new iteration that we can expect to see at some point when. <laughs> I like my job too much, Nikki, to tell you. That. Fair. <laughs> totally fair. Respect that. <laughs> but I'm just saying we're always working. We're always working. Go ahead. Is this classical styling in terms of like the vector and everything something that you foresee maybe being a bigger part of the design process? Yeah, so our brand actually just switched our, our DNA back to that vector. And the Nano, that's why that late change happened on the Nano 9. They wanted really the Nano to lead that. And it was a cool shout out to the, you know, Nano 1 and 2 that had that vector. So it was a really familiar thing for the CrossFitter, but also for us, no one knew at the time that our whole brand was about to, you know, um, switch. So it was like, that's why you saw the new box. Like that's a new box because we have new branding. So um, we're excited about it. the vector is what we believe the consumer wants. Um, we've heard enough. So you'll, you'll kind of see that, that Delta definitely start moving away as we go forward. It was the six, right? That introduced the triangle. Delta. That was, that's correct. That was the first one. Very good. Well, I, I wish we could continue our nano trivia. Um, that would be very enjoyable over a couple of beers. I know it's, it's almost five o'clock here, Tommy. So, you know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> He's already started. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, look, I want to thank you so much for joining us, for getting, uh, giving us an opportunity to just interview you and hear a little bit about the design and the creative process. It's super interesting to us. And, and I can't wait to see, you know, how these, the Nano uh, franchise just continues to grow over the years and be a part of the CrossFit community and a part of um, the CrossFit games and the whole experience that we have every day that we're training. Um, I know Tommy and Nikki will get a chance to actually use their shoe. Mine's coming on Friday. So on Friday, I'll have the opportunity to throw down in the, uh, in the garage and have some fun with it. So thanks again for joining us. And um, we look forward to seeing what comes out next. Thank you guys so much. Um, we're big fans of you at Reebok. So keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Time to go test these. Yeah, I'm excited. In time. All right. Uh